Hi, this is Monica, and welcome back to my channel. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as you can see, I'm on my way home. Makeup is already done. My husband graduated into some kind of organization today. But today, I wanted to talk to y'all about the time that when I was working at a nursing home with a bunch of women that actually was supportive to each other. Not only was we supportive to each other, we had each other's back. We had each other's back because it was these sad, sad women that's called side chicks. These side chicks decided to come to the job, not just for me, but for a couple of us inside the building in different cases. So like, comment, and subscribe, and, and welcome back to my channel. Now, as you know, I tell y'all stories all the time about stuff that goes on in my regular life. And this story is about my regular life, but it's also about these sad chicks. These sad chicks that don't know their place. These women that was coming to our job on some bullshit about some niggas, that ninjas, that we now, as you see, it was like a group of us. And some of us worked on the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, and the fourth floor. But we all had something in common. Our, the men that we were dating was shit. They was always fucking around. It was always something. But see, it really wasn't just that they was fucking around. It was the bitches that they chose to fuck around with. It was these sad chicks that had lost their motherfucking man. It was the sad chicks for me. I mean, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to tell y'all these stories. And this is what, this is three stories in one. Because, see, this the women didn't just come to the job for me. They came for two other ladies. And they just kept coming. And I don't even know why. Because if you got a good team and you work with a bunch of women that's supportive, listen to me. We're going to be on your ass like the police, honey. And that's what exactly what we was. So we're going to start with Lynn. Now, Lynn's dude was like a street pharmacist. And he wasn't just an idiot kind of street pharmacist. He was a big street pharmacist. But he took care of her and her kids. When I say he took care of her and her kids, she didn't want for but shit. See, her dude was a hoe. When I say he was a hoe, he was a ho-ho. But he was the type of dude that he would tell the bitches that he was fucking around with, like, don't mess with Lynn. That's my girl. That, and he made it clear, but at the end of the day, he still was shit. He still was fucking around with these girls. So Lynn had started receiving phone calls on her personal phone, on her personal cell phone. And when I, when I said that they was calling, they was calling like, oh, I'm messing around with your man, this, that, and third. She wouldn't even argue with him because she was much older than what they was. But still, they wanted the life that she had because he had just bought her a house. When I say he had, he had bought her a house, a car, he bought her oldest daughter a car, he was rolling. But see, they wanted that lifestyle but because he had a woman and that was a sad chick. See, I think the sad chick should know their place. My whole thing is she didn't know her place. So when she decided to argue with Lynn, Lynn wouldn't give her the motherfucking time of day. So she just she decided one day she was going to get a gang of her friends. So because and she, she gonna... wouldn't give them no argument, they decided that they was going to get four girls was going to come up to her job. They was going to bust her windows out and they was going to jump her. So Lynn wasn't the type that she was going to give up a whole lot of argument, but she wasn't no punk bitch either. So Lynn decided, she seen the girls when they, the girl on the first floor seen the girls when they pulled up. It was four of them. Now, keep in mind, me and my best friend was working on the second floor. We was looking out the window. When, my, when, when Lynn decided to go outside, we all was looking out the window. My best friend just turned around. She was like, fuck that. I'm going out there with her. When she went, we all went. When I say the floors was clear, all the aides was gone, and some of the nurses was outside, we weren't playing that shit. But see, at the end of the day, this girl was popping around. I had twins by him, and this, that, and the third. He decorated my apartment. He bought me a car. But at the end of the day, when Lynn kept approaching him about the shit, he denied the whole thing. He denied everything. He denied even being with the girl. But still... At the so end when day, Lynn decided that she was had enough, we went outside. When we outside, the girl was still popping her shit, but she wasn't popping it like she was. She at the end of the day, she seen us all coming outside because we weren't gonna let her get jumped. So at the end of the day, we not only did we follow her home that day, we went to the bitch house because at the end of the day, we not doing that. Because they was coming past this girl's house. They was actually being aggravated. See, my thing with sad chicks is if you got a sad chick, she should have rules. If you're going to do all that, make rules for that bitch. The same way you don't want nobody going through your phone and stuff like this. She didn't want them bitches on her motherfucking phone. But he had them on her phone anyway. He sure did. He had them on her phone anyway. And they was doing what the fuck they want to. And he didn't do nothing to stop it. Matter of fact, he didn't do nothing to stop it. And his sisters then was taken up for the bitch. Yeah. His sisters then was taken up for the bitch. No matter how Lynn took care of his mama and his sisters them, they still turned to her for this sad chick. So at the end of the day, of course, when, 
when she left him alone, he start he started messing with the sad chick in public now. Now she thinking she winning. But see, after he starts swinging on her the same way he was swinging on Lynn, she didn't like that shit. She didn't like that shit at all. But see, when the tables turned on her, the same thing that she was doing to, the same thing he was doing to Lynn, he turned around and was doing to her too. See, because karma don't have no filter. Karma starts on the 12 and it ends on the number 12. So that bitch got what she deserved. So at the end of the day, Lynn moved on with her life and she got her a better man. But the, well, why should she have to, have to defend herself at her job? You mean to tell me they didn't have enough respect for her to not even come to her job? Yeah, this was the story of Lynn. <clears throat> even though Lynn made it out of that relationship, still, at the end of the day, they still shouldn't have came. But still, the staff backed her. When I say we backed her, we backed her. And from that point on, we was close. We wasn't just close, we was coming. We was, if somebody, one of us called, we was there. By the end of the day, a couple of days ago, I told y'all about my best friend. And I'm going to tell her story last because her story was actually, it wasn't funny, but the way that we handled it at the job, it was funny. Now, but I'm going to tell y'all about me. Now, keep in mind, y'all know I was messing with the, with the narcissist. Y'all know what he was doing. But see, when the women was calling my phone, on time, they would call my phone every morning at 9 o'clock. And not only would they call my phone at 9 o'clock, they would be like, oh, he on his way to get some clothes. Make sure you wash his clothes and this, that, and the third. Now, keep in mind, I knew I was breaking up with him because I was secretly seeing Edie, my husband. But at the end of the day, they, these bitches still was playing on my phone. They was playing on my phone to the point everybody in the facility had took my phone. And then when the bitches would answer it, they would get into it with the bitches. So at the, one day, the bitch decided that she was going to come to my job, her and her mother. And they was going to jump me because she was on baby number two. Now, keep in mind, I told y'all. I told y'all in the story before that even though she had claimed that my narcissist was messing with, they were so petty. They were so petty that they would call me and compare spaghetti. Like, all you can do, you sit at home while I'm at work, and you calling my job, and to compare spaghetti, oh, he likes my spaghetti better than yours, or oh, I'm doing this better than he, better than what you doing, I'm sucking his better than what you doing. At the end of the day, my whole thing was this, if that's what you want to do, do that. But I'm at work making money, but these bitches were still playing on my phone. See, my narcissist was stupid. My narcissist was a narcissist for real. He was taking up for them bitches and he was living in my motherfucking house. But see, I blame myself for that. I blame myself because I could have prevented that. I could have stopped him. I could have made it so that he didn't get away with hurting my feelings anymore. But at the end of the day, I thought I loved him. I thought that this was the one. But he wasn't. But at the end of the day, when I would bring it up to him and he would tell me stuff like, oh, no, Monica, I want to mess with her. This, 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 that, and third. The bitches get so petty about the narcissist that they was taking pictures of him sleep with no clothes on at their house, sending it to me, and I would send it to him. But see, he was so stupid that he didn't even realize that I was leaving him. He didn't realize that I was getting into a whole nother relationship. When he realized that I was in a whole nother relationship, his friends came to him and made him out of the joke on the block. Your bitch got took by another bitch, is what they were telling him. So his pride was more hurt than anything. But even after I left him, even though I left him alone, these bitches were still calling my phone. But see, they was calling my phone and saying stuff like, oh, you a dyke, you this, that, and third, you a lesbian, what's the woo scooby about, or whatever the fuck. You still stuck with the dumb motherfucker, ain't got no job. Bitch, how about that? You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, this is how we went through this stuff with the narcissist. Now, keep in mind, even though I left him alone, still, it was still embarrassing for all of us when these bitches would come up to the See, same. To me, sad chicks don't know their place. Not only do they not know their place, they, they want to make themselves known. They want to dress like your man. They want to be like your man. They want to do everything. See, my thing about a sad chick, a sad chick is just what it is as a sad chick. My, I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it with them. I keep getting phone calls. That's the reason why this one is all broke up, but I don't give a damn. But I'm still going to put it in there. I don't give a shit. Okay? But at the end of the day, these sad chicks was, like, ridiculous. They were so ridiculous that this particular day, it was a girl that worked in the building with us. And her cousin was messing around with my best friend's baby daddy. And she knew this the whole time, but she didn't say anything to my best friend because we all work together. But everything she heard my best friend talking about, she would tell her motherfucking cousin. But when we figured out that her, that she was cousins with the bitch, this is what happened. Me and my best friend and the same crew was at work. Now we was at work working and we was laughing and stuff like this. All of a sudden, the girl on the, sudden, the, girl on the first floor called upstairs and she said, it's some girls told my best friend 
It's some girls looking in your car. When they was looking and circling her car, they was looking at the car because that's the car that my best friend's baby daddy had picked this bitch up in as she was pregnant. So she called herself because he stopped fucking with her. She called herself going to come up to my best friend's job to tell her about that they was fucking around and she was pregnant. Now, keep in mind, we was all at work. The girl on the first floor called upstairs. We came. When she called upstairs, she was like, there's a bunch of girls that's down here asking for my best friend. So me getting mad and me being fed up with the situation that was going on with me, I take off and I headed downstairs. I come downstairs on the elevator and I go out the side door where the bitches were standing at. And I walked up on them like, hey, I'm her. What do you want? They knew that I wasn't her because they knew what my best friend looked like. Because, of course, his ass had told them everything about my best so friend. So, as soon as I turned around, my best friend and the girl on the first floor and the two girls that's on the fourth floor, they all came outside. Now, keep in mind, it was like four of them and the bitch that worked with us. Now, the bitch that worked with us was like, no, no, this ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm telling this bitch to shut the fuck up because this ain't got nothing to do with you either. Now that we know that you the mole, bitch, you know what I'm saying? We ain't fucking with you. So, keep in mind, we was on her ass, too. So my, my best friend is, she's so calm. My best friend, y'all got to get to know her. My best friend is like, she like one of those people that's real calm. But if you fuck with her, she going to tear up the entire block. Okay, so the bitch was steadily talking about, oh, yeah, this is a picture of him sleep at my house. And this, that, and third. Whoop, whoop, scoot about. I had told y'all about her before. What the story that I told y'all about my best friend. Just the same bitch. And at the end of the day, this bitch knew everything about my best friend. So we all came downstairs. We all approached this bitch because we had got the fuck fed up with this sad bitch shit. You know what I'm saying? She still thought that all of us, that I don't know what. Now the bitch is so dumb. The bitch is so dumb that she messed around with the other sad bitch that she, she became friends. She befriended the other sad bitch of his because they got kids with him. My whole thing is, bitch, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I just didn't get it. Even after my best friend told her, that's my car, that's not his car, this bitch still didn't believe it. Because he had lied and said that this was his car. But see, the bitch that she befriended, the other baby mama, the other sad chick, the sad chick of the sad chick, the sad chick number three, the fuck, her motherfucking stupid ass was doing stuff like her lipstick was popping. What the fuck? She's, now she's getting irritated with my best friend because she don't want, my best friend wouldn't allow her kids to be around their kids, which I think my best friend is right. I think they right. Well, why the fuck? They don't know their place. That's what the, see, this whole thing is about sad chicks. And even yeah, though they, I got irritated about sad chicks is because me and my best friend was talking yesterday. And when we was talking, she was telling me like stuff like how they was acting and stuff like this. And we was remembering all the shit that they had been doing. But at the end of the day, it wasn't just sad chicks that her baby daddy was messing with. It's sad chicks in general. So this is a PSA for sad chicks. Know your damn place. If you know he fucking around and he got a wife or a girlfriend or somebody he'd have been with for a while, bitch, know your place. You the sad chick. My whole thing, see, this is, I think differently. I think outside the box. If my husband got a bitch, first of all, bitch, the only reason why I'm going to get mad at you is because you not paying half of the bills in this motherfucking house. Bitch, if you going to be the sad chick, you going to play your role for real fucking around with me. Yes. You going to do your half, ho. What the fuck? See, that's my thing about it. If you going to be a sad chick, play your role. But at the end of the day, these sad chicks has lost of course. their it's his fault. Of course it was their fault. It was these men's fault that these women was coming up to our job. It was these men's fault that they was being disrespectful. It was these men's fault that created, that made me an enemy that I didn't make on my own. My whole thing is let me make that decision. Let me know if I, if I don't like somebody, let that be my decision. I don't want to hate somebody because your ass is fucking around with them. But these bitches was like hating on me, my friend, and, and my best friend. Because they was messing around with these these dumbasses. So at the end of the day, I think that, yeah, sad chicks done lost their damn man, you know. And and and, and I, I did a little, like, commercial in between somewhere here. Because people was asking me about how do I clean my goats and I smoke cigarettes and I drink coffee. So I actually showed them. So that's in this video somewhere, too, girl. Listen, 
I am tired. I've been gone all day. And but stuff once like again, that. I truly, truly, truly thank y'all for all the support that y'all showed me. Because without y'all, I would not be nobody. So yeah, I, I come on here and I empty my brain out because my brain be so cluttered with bullshit that I got to dump it off. So this is one of those dumps. This is one of those dump to the dumps. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said before, like, comment, and subscribe. Hi, my name is Monica, and I thank y'all for watching, and I'll see y'all in my next story. Bye.